today. Hello, everyone, and welcome to an extra special edition of the Cooking Without Looking TV show, Blind versus Sighted Edition. Mm, that sounds exciting, Alan. Hello, Alan, and everybody out there. You know, although that we've done these shows with visually impaired and blind people, today we're doing something different. It's like it's like a cook-off competition. It's between a mom that's totally blind and her daughter who is sighted. So, and she's going to be blindfolded instead of blind. So that should that's be interesting. That's going to be Alan, interesting. Alan? We thought that our blind and visually impaired chefs make it look so easy. We wanted to show our sighted friends that cooking without sight may not be as easy as it seems. Well, so that's why we're going to show you this by inviting a mother named Cheryl Thurston. Hello, Cheryl. And Hi. her daughter, Hi. whose name is Arisha. And we're going to formally introduce Cheryl and Arisha, who are, uh, Cheryl's totally blind. Arisha, like I said, is sighted. Cheryl's going to prepare her recipe, and then Arisha is going to prepare it blindfolded can you believe she'll be preparing her dish blindfolded that should be a hoot we're just gonna have lots of fun with that alan yes it will be in that just a reminder that all of us on the cooking without looking tv show are blind or visually impaired well except of course today's special guest so let's get started on the cooking without looking tv show blind versus sighted edition Yes, it's a very exciting show today. Uh, we're going to have Arisha come out and Cheryl. Cheryl's the secretary for Blind United in San Bernardino. And she's going to tell us more about that as well. But we're going to have fun. Hopefully it won't turn into any family feud of any sort. So we're going to get started with the both of you. So, Alan, take it away. Whoa. Um, well... Today, we welcome Cheryl Thurston, Secretary of Blind United Incorporated in Santa Barbara, California. Welcome, Cheryl. Thank you. Uh, and we also welcome Arisha, who is Cheryl's daughter. Hi. Thank you, Arisha. Hi, Arisha. And Alan, you want to have Cheryl tell her a little bit about herself, and then I'm going to have Arisha tell us a little bit about herself. Absolutely. And then, Cheryl, tell us just a little bit about your journey through blindness. Well, again, I'm Cheryl Thurston, and I am here in Fontana, California, uh, one of the co-founders for Blind United. Uh, Ed Davis being the CEO and the president, myself and Brittany Mexico. Uh, we partnered with him, and our ultimate goal is to have a training center here in the Inland Empire where blind and vision impaired individuals will come and be trained in computers, independent living skills, braille, uh, and mobility. So that is our ultimate goal. Uh, I am married for 32 years. Again, my daughter's Arisha. She's here with me today. Um, I lost my sight in December 2000 due to an accident. I had a couple of surgeries, um, retina did not stay attached, and from that I was declared legally blind, and I had to leave home, um, I think that was in 2000, of October, and I attended the JBL Now, which was formerly the foundation for the junior blind for nine months, so I could learn how to cope and live life again. Wow, that's uh, quite a story, Cheryl. Yes. Um, Arisha, yeah. would you yeah. tell us a little bit about yourself and yeah, how tell you us, live Arisha. with a blind mom? I, yeah. I, sorry, I could barely hear that last question. Tell oh, us a little I bit think, about yourself. Yeah, Arisha. tell us about yourself. Arisha. Sorry, Alan. Yeah. Tell us about yourself and how it is to live with a, a blind parent. Anything you'd like to share with us? Uh, my name is Arisha Byers. I'm 40 years old. I work at Amazon. 
Um, it's okay living with my mom. It's amazing. I love seeing how she cooks and she navigates her day being blind. She does everything that I do. She has a better mm. social life than I do. <laughs> wow. She's, you both are very articulate and she's very fortunate to have you and vice versa. That's amazing. Helen? Well, Cheryl, I'm a little bit curious. Uh, I imagine that you were a completely different kind of a person when you were sighted. What, what really changed for you? Well, just a um, lot changed for me when I lost my sight. I, I, I just went through a bad time for about six months. Didn't think I could continue to be a wife or a mom. And I just didn't think I could live life until I went to the junior blind for training and then I met wonderful people that were just like me that um, coached me along and encouraged me that I can still do everything that I used to do. I just do it a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's um, a pretty good way of looking at it, I guess. Yeah, that's great. Good. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, that's a great way to look at it. And Arisha, being a child, I'm just curious, how old were you when your mom went blind? How was it for you to adjust and what kind of things did you have to change or adjust or adapt to when your mom became blind? How old were you? Um, I actually went to Braille and I volunteered at Braille. Oh. I definitely learn what it's like for her and to walk in her shoes. Right. How old were you? Ooh, I was 17 at the time. 16, okay. 17 at the time. Yeah, I bet it was a little devastating at first, wasn't it, when it happened? Absolutely. It was life-changing at the time. But, you know, whatever my mother needed definitely wasn't a problem to help and adjust to whatever she needed. Right. You're a mature young lady, and it's, it's tragic, you know, at any age. But it's, it's in a way, it's good that it happened when you're, like, 17 and not, like, 10 or, you know, right. it was a good age where you're mature enough to cope and, and take an interest in in the, everything that she was doing so that's wonderful alan i'm just curious arisha ever try to pull any tricks on your mom yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah i did i tried but it didn't work she still caught on didn't she somehow moms just do that i don't know it's the mother's well, mental <laughs> Mums always know whatever happens, mum always knows. <laughs> well, now the competition begins. Yay. Okay. Cheryl, what are you preparing for us today? I am going to make stuffed mushrooms with cream cheese and sausage, and they are to die for. So we use this. Um, as appetizers when we have our family functions or just social gatherings. So um, I enjoy it. So um, I'll get started. Um, in front of me, I have my cutting board because I got to cut the cream cheese in half. I'll use half of that. And then I have my uh, another bowl here where I have my butter there, which I use to put on the mushrooms. Now the mushrooms, the same time we've already washed them and clean them so they just been sitting there draining because I need the water to come off of it in order to put the butter on it. And then I have my bowl to the left here where I'm going to um, put the meat in once I cook it. So I'm going to go to the sink, wash my hands, and I'll get started preparing the meat. Now in my meat, you saw in the recipe that I added an egg just to hold it together and I already put that in the meat. So I cook that along in the meat as I'm going. So give me a minute. I'm very glad to see you start out by washing your hands. I think that's oh, right. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. And of course, this is your kitchen, so you know your way around, right? Oh, yeah. I, I've been here 32 years, so I knew this how, you know, at one point when I could see, so it just made it a lot easier after I lost the fight because we didn't change much, so Okay. Still, that's good. Have you done anything special about marking your house with dots or braille or anything like that? No, I haven't marked the house like that at all. Just like um, some of the uh, appliances I did, but other than that, no. 
Okay. I'm going to put the scale on and I'm going to start the meat. So I'm using a fork and I have, um, I'm using the Jimmy Dean sausage with sage in it. And like I said, we mixed the egg up in it ahead of time last night to make this go by a little faster. So now I'm just cooking the meat. And you put the egg in for what reason? To just to hold have, it. So instead, you know how some people use like breadcrumbs? Mm -hmm. Just to hold it together. Okay. So you prepped that all the time. You already put the egg in. So yeah, you're just ready to it already sort of cooked yeah. together. Mm -mm. The egg is right there on the table. <laughs> okay. Okay. So that's what's cooking now. The sausage. Now, how, how do you judge when it's done? Can you tell by the smell or do you listen to it the way it cooks? Um, or by the feel of it when you stir it. Is it the egg right there in the bowl? Yeah, the feel. And I cook it about maybe five or six minutes. It doesn't take long for the sausage to cook. And it's kind of, I use the fork to kind of mash it up so it's not in chunks and it's a little smaller to go, you know, so we can scoop it into the mushroom. I would assume that that gives you a lot of flavor, that sausage. Oh, yeah. That's the key, yeah. So you kind of rely on time. Yeah. To be a lot. Okay. So very long to make. I bet it starts to smell good when it's cooking, too. It is. You can actually smell the sage from the sausage. Mm. Mm -hmm. I, I wanted to change the recipe at the time, but it was a little too late. Because we have also done it like with the um, seafood stuffing. But I just said, well, I'll go ahead on since we said we were going to stuff it with sausage. And, uh, but that would have taken a little extra time to do. And let me ask you, what kind of mushrooms do you use to stuff? I know they have the little ones. I don't know if you use bigger ones or what do you prefer? I, I was trying to get the portobello ones, but they were out of them. So... Um, they're nice size medium mushrooms. Mm -hmm. well, I wonder what ones are those what are they called? Because the portobello are huge. These ones are just yeah. the these ones that we're using are just the regular size mushrooms. They're nice big size mushrooms. Um, mm -hmm. but they're not as big as the other ones. As the portobello, yeah. That's yeah. good. That's medium size. Well, yeah. Those are big. Sounds like you guys know your mushrooms. I'm not much of an expert on those. So good for you, right, guys? Not coming in the stores right now due to the shortage. Um, they just didn't have the polar metals at all. So we had to just kind of substitute, you know. Make it work, sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hold on one second. <laughs> Here. Okay, while that is cooking. I use the Philadelphia cream cheese. Uh oh, and I'm just gonna take it out of the box and um, get ready to cut the package. So I have my knife, and I feel the side where the blade is, and then I just take it and just start cutting it down in size to make it easier, you know, to open the work with. Okay, let me take it over here. And we're gonna check the meat a little. Make sure everything is okay with that. So can you clarify, I might've missed something. When you open the cream cheese, you put the whole thing in a bowl or half? What are you doing with the cream cheese uh -huh. right now? I use a half like for the the, the the amount that I'm using for today, but normally if I'm cooking more for more people, then I would use a whole one. The whole, you know, eight ounce Philadelphia. Right. And you're just putting it in a bowl because you're gonna mix a lot of ingredients together, right? 
Well, no. What I what you have to do is put it in the meat. Once the meat is done, so it can melt yeah. through. It. Oh, okay. Yeah. You want it to melt through the meat. Oh, sounds good already. <laughs> sounds yummy. It smells good. <laughs> yes, it does. I bet it does. I mean, I have smell vision. That would be awesome. <laughs> So I'm just stirring right now and kind of making uh smashing the meat a little bit mm -hmm. as I go. Cheryl, um, I don't know if this is too personal, you don't have to answer, but I was just wondering um how your husband took to go, you know, going blind and you know how, how that's working out. Well, it was kind of hard for him at first. Mm -hmm. Um uh, big adjustment for him. You know, because I was feeling like I didn't think I could continue to be a wife. And he did everything to reassure me that I could be. And he, you know, he would be with me on the walk. And he has been. So um, he's okay. He treats me just oh. like I can see still. Okay. So he expects you to cook dinner then. <laughs> <laughs> not, not every day. But so you could use the blind card and say, oh, I can't cook every night. You have to take me out for reservations. I'll make reservations a couple nights a week. Yeah, it don't work with him like that. No. <laughs> I just find it cooking. I might use a pressure cooking for certain things or, you know. Mm -hmm. But, um. Yeah. Do you like small appliances like Alan? Alan likes small appliances and he could probably share that with you more than I can but it, like you just said you use you use a different appliance to make certain things yes I'm getting ready to add the cream cheese okay to it so I'm taking off the wrapper and now I'm going to work this through here so it'll melt mm -hmm. Down just a little. Let's see. I wish you guys was here and I could give you some, let you try it. We're still working on trying. getting smell of vision. <laughs> I can say it smells amazing and I'm ready to eat. I don't want to cook anymore. I just want to eat. Hey, one time we have to do the show where we can all meet at one location and do this. I'll fly to where you guys are. We can use Renee's kitchen. Can you guys still hear her and see her? Well, I can't really see her. No, I've <laughs> not ever been able to really see I'm, her. But I'm in here. I know you're there. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Annette? Work through here. It's a little tough to see as well apologize i'm on my phone this time my computer would not turn on so and i apologize to you alan because i didn't have a script i had to rewrite it in big print oh, so i yeah i had problem. other not words messed up <laughs> so we just have fun with it you we just go with it right we make it work yeah thank you she's coming in loud and clear Cheryl, we want to encourage you to just tell it, keep talking about what you're doing here because we're kind of losing you. We stopped at yeah, cream cheese. Please. We don't know what's going on. <laughs> Heat in. So I can finish preparing it over there. Are you mixing any other things with it? Uh, no, just the stuffed mushrooms right now. Later, we're going to prepare dinner. Okay. 
So I'm actually scooping the meat into the bowl because it is completely done. Now, I'm going to set the bowl here just for a second, and then I'm just going to wash my hands and get the. <laughs> Okay, now I have them. Can you see me now? <laughs> I'm here. Yeah. I can yeah, see you there. Too. Yes. That looks like a cutting, uh, cutting board. Yeah. Yeah. I'm in the cutting board. I have the bowl right here with the butter. And I'm going to get my pan, the little half pan. Can I have that pan? Okay. Okay. I'm going to sit my pan here because that's what I'm going to put them in. So I have some mushrooms here. And I like to take them and dip them with the butter in and out because I've already cleaned them. So that's what I'm doing is putting them in a little butter. And then from the meat here, I'm going to actually take the meat. And I use a, uh, have you seen the soup spoons? Like a small ladle? Yes. Okay. And it's stuffed with. And it's just the right size that it fills it correctly. Yes, because they come different sizes. So I'll set this in the pan. That's one that's complete. And then I'll get another mushroom out and put the butter on it. The assumption that you're putting them in a pan over there to your yeah. left. Small, um, I'm going to say nine by 13 dish. And I put her right. And then once I finish with that, hold on, put just a little bit more meat in here. I'm gonna add another one to the pan. And I'll take another mushroom out and I'll butter it really good in and out. Mm, that sounds so good. Oh, Do you don't add Parmesan cheese at all? I'm add at the end on top. I sprinkle the Parmesan cheese on top once I get all the mushrooms. Getting ahead of you here, yeah. <laughs> they definitely have Parmesan. Oh, yeah. Always Parmesan, yeah. So that's another mushroom. These are nice sized mushrooms we got. Yeah, everybody gets one, right? That's it? You, you, that's it in here? You, you have the other mushrooms, right? Okay, I just wanted to make sure I didn't have her mushrooms. No, mine are. <laughs> By the way. So okay. is there is Arisha taking notes here as well, I'm sure. She is. She's just, she's just gonna kill this. It's gonna be awesome for her. Mm -hmm. Be a lot of fun. Just a second. Okay. You're a pro. Let me tell you, Cheryl, you're a pro in the kitchen here. Yeah. It looks so easy. You make it look so easy. Well, when I first came out of the blind school, it wasn't that easy and you know, but I want no trial and error. Okay, mm -hmm. so I'll off my hands real quick. I'm scooping that. I'm one that don't like sticky stuff or anything on my hands, like the butter. So mm -hmm. now let me get the parmesan, and then I just sprinkle it on top of each one. So I'm just sprinkling now. You just sprinkle it on lightly, loosely, right? Yes. Okay. So that's on. And then I put it in the oven for about like 15 minutes at the most. Okay. And uh, the, the, you want to see my other finishing touch before she gets started? I, I'd like to see the finished product. Okay. Oh, hold on. Actually, I think we'd all like to taste the finished product. 
Okay. Okay, hold on. Let me get the mitten. I need a mitten. Okay. I, I told Renee I would say one ahead of time just to see what it will look like because that's oh, yeah, that's the that looks wonderful. You could oh, even put it good. put two pieces of bread and eat it like a <laughs> oh, so. out of the way. Mm, that looks so good. That looks more like the main dish than the appetizer. <laughs> you can make it a main dish. What? Okay. All right. Do you need room over here now? Is this okay? Yes, I'll okay. take this. Okay. Great. Okay, so I'm turning it over to Risha at this time. Oh my God, are you for me? <laughs> okay, I'm I'm ready for you, Risha. Alan, do you have anything else you'd uh, like to add? I'd just like to say thank you so very much, Cheryl. And now the real competition begins. Yeah, yeah. the real competition. Arisha, this is your time, girl. Your time to shine. And first of all, we all want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts for being such a good sport and coming on to do this. And, and we really, really appreciate it. It's going to be great. Uh, we do want to extend some grace to you, though. We're going to give you some time, if you haven't done it already, just to line up your ingredients. It's, it's called mise en place. Take little dishes or whatever makes it easier for you in the order that you're going to use the ingredients. So before you put your blindfold on, Arisha, do you have any thoughts or anything you'd like to say? I'm just hoping for no injury. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not going to be any injuries. We're going to make this is going to be a fun and entertaining experience for you and our audience. So go ahead and get started. Put that blindfold on and no peeking, okay? Okay. Hold okay. myself now. Okay, right. we're, we're visually impaired, so we don't know if you're putting it on correctly or whatever. <laughs> so we're relying on your. Honesty right. and transparency. Oh, it's it's a, a, a is it a what is it a what am I calling scarf? It's, this is a scarf, right? Yes, it's a scarf. <clears throat> Sorry, because I feel like I'm gonna hit my knee. Okay, so it's tied <laughs> across my eyes. How's it feel? Oh, girl? All I can say is dark. <laughs> <laughs> okay, dark. so she out with her meat. So the meat. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go over to the stove and I'm gonna go ahead and fry up the Jimmy Dean sausage. <laughs> Where's your pan? Is your pan out there? Let's see. Be careful. Put that over there, and then before I even start cooking, I do have to remember to wash my hands. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm a little curious about something. When you guys cook and you make a little bit of a mess, who does the cleanup? Myself, I have a guide dog, and my guide dog does a wonderful job of cleanup. Mm -hmm. I went a whole roll of paper towels right now. So. Oopsie daisy, I'm sorry. <laughs> She's going to have to buy some more paper towels. I think I have to buy uh, some paper towels. <laughs> yeah, the whole roll of paper towels is wet. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to go ahead and going to turn on the stove. Do you have a gas oven or a regular? It's a gas. Okay, how's that? How's that work, work for you? A little easier, right? So so far, so good. How do you know how far to turn it on, Arisha? Um, because there's a little thing right here that I'm trying to feel. 
<laughs> I feel like it's high, so I'm going to keep turning it until it goes down a little low. <laughs> I burn <laughs> it all right now. <laughs> Still a little hot over here. And, and are you sure you have the pan centered over the uh, over the stove, over the burner? One more time. Are you sure that you have the pan centered over the burner? Yeah, no, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> if you hear me scream in like two seconds, that means I kind of dropped the pot on the foot. <laughs> so, all right, I'm center guys so I'm putting the meat in the thing it's sizzling I can hear a little sizzle if you feel around the edge of the pan way over the top and feel that the heat's nice and even that's it's kind of how I do it I know my stove pretty well too so I can kind of tell by the feel of where I put the pan so I hear a little sizzle oh. there are a whole lot of sizzles Okay, I think I just dropped some meat on my foot. <laughs> I have flip flops on just to let you know, and I have wet meat on my foot. <laughs> this is just not okay right now, guys. You don't have a dog anywhere either, do you? No animals, because I think he will be in here eating the meat off of my foot. Exactly. Uh, he may not want raw meat. Yeah, it feels good on the top of my foot. <laughs> it's cold and slimy. I think. <laughs> okay, I just dropped my fork. Now I'm gonna get the fork. <laughs> okay. Well, now you should get another fork and wash that one, huh? Uh, I don't know where. Oh, me. <laughs> so we don't get a new fork until I can find that other fork. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's, that's funny, I have to say. Uh, listen what I you know, drop stuff, always I good. usually find it that way. So I'm crushing up the meat like she did, smashing it. <laughs> this time I'm not going to drop any meat or the fork <laughs> or the paper towel <laughs> or start a kitchen fire. <laughs> 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 mom, is that mom laughing? Is that mom laughing? <laughs> I'm play with a knife and try to cut half of a um. Okay, we're not going to drop the knife. I promise. So now I have cheese, like she did. The meat is still cooking, so I'm going to. Attempt to open the box as gracefully, but I don't think that worked because I think I just ripped it to shreds. And now I'm gonna take and cut um the cutting board. I want to cut the cream cheese, not the board. Oh, well, your fingers or my nails. <laughs> um, let me try to think. Hey, how to make Sweetie, if you curl your fingers on uh -huh. your left, curl them a little bit and just put them against the cream cheese so you don't, you know, cut your fingers. That's one little trick you can try. Let's see. Um, yeah, curl them a little. Are they curled now? I can't tell. All right, I, well, you do. I, I can't see what's going on there at all. What I do is I kind of unwrap it as best I can. And when they seal it on the ends, I take a pair of scissors and cut the end off. And work from it that way. That is a good way. So I did cut it in half. So I'm going to take this half and I'm going to go mix it in with my my meat <laughs> or attempt to. <laughs> you found your meat? Yeah. I... Oh, right now. All right. So we got that. We didn't drop the cream cheese on the floor, did we? No, no, no. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> I'm only joking. The fork is safe. Oh, the meat is safe. Wet but safe. The meat, I'm assuming it's almost done. It feels done. 
Feels a little crumbly. It feels no, feel like I'm <laughs> Oh, Lord, let's hope it's done. Uh, you can't tell what? by the smell? Actually, oh. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and add the Philadelphia cream cheese and mix it around in the meat. Yeah, you said you made a good point that that blind per people use is that the meat felt crumbly when you yeah. kind of mix it around. So that's a good sign that it is, you know, cooking. And now with the cream cheese, it'll cook some more. So yeah. I think you got it under control. So I'm mixing it around the cream cheese until it dis will dissolve, I guess, into yeah. the meat <laughs> or mixes into the meat. We're gonna mix this. <laughs> I feel like I'm not mixing anything in this moment. <laughs> that was hot. Okay. Is it melting? I, I don't know if it's melting. It's <laughs> like it's melting. I'm assuming it's melting. <laughs> You're doing, you're doing a great job. It, you know, the cream cheese melts very easily, so I'm sure it's melting. As long as you're, like, stirring it around and mixing it in, it should be fine. I'm sure it will. I don't feel the hunk of the cheese anymore. So That's good. I'm just going to stir it a little longer to make sure the cream cheese is melted. Mom, what you think so far? I, I, I think she okay, but I, I she got a I think she got a little bit to clean up off this floor when she did it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's the floor is gonna need a wax and the most stuff. It's gonna need some stuff. Okay. <laughs> so I'm gonna go back to my counter over here with you guys. Yes, welcome okay. back. That's the dishwasher. That is not the counter. <laughs> okay, so now I have my bowl and I am going to look for my spoon. Or, yeah, not that. Um, that is not. That is Parmesan cheese, I think. That is. Made by the stove. Did you, yeah, did you leave it by the stove, maybe? That is not. <laughs> That is a napkin. <laughs> oh, well, we're just gonna get a new one because I don't know what that thing is. But we're gonna do that. Okay. Ew, that was cream cheese. I can find that. Okay. I wanted to scoop the meat, but it looks like I had extra cream cheese. Okay, now I got hot meat on my foot. <laughs> I think this shirt is going to the cleaners. I think I just got cream cheese in the shirt. I think that's why they make aprons. I think I'm going to need an apron. Yeah. It's worked well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now I have scooped my meat into the bowl. What am I doing now? Sorry, don't tell me. Don't tell me. Don't Okay, there goes my spoon on the floor. <laughs> like my third spoon, two forks. Yeah, I don't know where that is. Okay, the stove is off though. Safety first. Okay. Safety first. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Here. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead. Um, now I have my mushrooms and oh that's a butter. I'm going to take the mushrooms and put it in the butter, but I am also going to rewash my hands again. <laughs> that's the dish strain. Oh, did I take those paper towels out of the sink? Okay, the paper towel rack is still in the sink. <laughs> Um, Knowing your kitchen really does help. <laughs> but my guide dog does not do a very good job of washing my hands. 
as much as she'd like to. <laughs> Yeah, well, I dropped the paper towels in the sink, and now I don't have anything to dry my hands on, so I got to get a towel. So give me just one second to try to figure out where the towels are. Oh. All right. I got it. Okay, so back over here to my board. Okay, so I am going to take the mushrooms like she did, and I'm going to rub them around in the butter. And then I'm going to take the spoon like she did. I don't have the soup spoon as she called it. I don't have that because of course it fell on the floor. <laughs> so we're gonna work with one. But I took the meat and I stuffed the mushroom with it and I'm gonna place it in the pan. Take another mushroom and push it around in the butter. And we're going to fill that up with some more of this lovely mixture that I hope tastes just as good as hers. I'm sure it will. <laughs> I think you melted the butter before, whereby I don't think Cheryl did, but it's easier if it's melted. Yeah. Right? I'm sure. Yep, there's butter. So. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, you got melted butter on the counter. I got melted butter on the counter. Sorry, guys. Um, oh. Oops, that did not go into the mushroom. That went oh. onto the counter. <laughs> I, I frequently find that uh, working over the top of a tray works well. At least right it now. contains the mess. <laughs> it doesn't stop me from making the best, but it does contain it. Mm -hmm. What I hate is when I spill a liquid on there and I happen to be leaning against the counter and then it goes all down in front of me, too. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's happened more than once. Mm -hmm. Well, until I used to learn to use a tray anyway. Mm -hmm. And this is working at all. This last mushroom doesn't want to stop. <sighs> all right. Okay. Is this tiring for you? Is it, you know, can you feel that it's extra effort or how are you feeling right now? Um, right now, I feel like I'm stuffing my fingers and not the actual. <laughs> and this mushroom is like it's wanting to give me a problem. The other one seemed a little easy, but it seems like this last one is just giving me problems. But we're going to do an extra one because that one seemed like it's going to, okay, that one just fell apart. Or just, ooh, I just broke that one. <laughs> All righty. Um, Mom, I'm going to steal one of your mushrooms out of your, your pack because it didn't want to work. Did that one break? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're going to uh -huh. go ahead and we're going to work it. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> This goes ahead and, and shows you that we rely so much on your site. Like, for instance, I have earrings that are difficult to put in. And when my sister has an earring that's difficult, she looks in the mirror and she sees where it's supposed to go and how it hooks and everything. She's, and she still can't get it. And I said, just feel it. Just feel where it goes in and feel for it. And it's so helpful. Even as we get older, even if we're not visually impaired, like, just as you get older, your eyesight's not as good. I think so. I wrote that. Or maybe oh, not. So, sorry, right, guys. I have my stuffed mushrooms here that I'm placing in this pan. That okay, is looking at her. Part of my I'm placing my mushrooms in the pan. And you don't have to grease that pan, right, Arisha? Yeah. This one is a non-stick pan that I have, so no. Good. Okay. Excellent. Now How I'm many mushrooms do you have in there? Let's see. It looks like about four or five. I did six. six? One, of, okay. one of them is kind of broken, and we're not sure about that particular mushroom. So we don't. <laughs> don't gonna... worry. If it's going to look worse in your stomach. It's going to be delicious. So I'm going to taste the same anyway. So okay. now what do you do? Um, right now, I'm trying to figure out how to get this thing. Is this Parmesan open? The hands is buttery and it won't open. Oh, there we go. Okay, you got it. Just sprinkle it on there. Okay. Oh. How do you know when you've got enough? I don't. I know. know. Work it up. It didn't look like it didn't look like you're putting it on even, but the, <laughs> there's quite a bit of it. 
Hey, it doesn't hurt to have more Parmesan. Don't worry about it. Yum. Yeah. Looks so good. Um, I think I seasoned the board. <laughs> My hands are covered in Parmesan cheese. I can feel it. <laughs> Alrighty, so I'm going to go ahead and place these in the oven. And give me just a moment. Um, okay, I need a thing for the oven. We're going to go ahead and place these in the oven. Got your mitten. Put them in the oven, and then I'm leave those in there for 15 to 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have a timer you can set? Yeah, yeah. I was just thinking that. Mm -hmm. A timer you need. Uh, okay. I do have a question for you, Arisha. How yes. do you know what the oven is set at? The mm -hmm. oven is set at I'm assuming it's still at 350 because she said it and she didn't turn it off. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> but it's not like one dot on there for her. So uh, we work. Yes. So we're working with that. So I'm going to go ahead and my blind. It's 1246. Okay. And I'm going to put it back on when it's time for me to pull my mushrooms out of the oven. And I made a mess. This right here is just, <laughs> ooh, <low. laughs> Well, that's Arisha, okay. You have been a great sport about this. I think I have been quite entertained. I, I hope you appreciate that. Exactly. And the counter then is probably on those mushrooms. Mm -hmm. You did right. great. You... <laughs> she did. She did so good. Cheryl, how do you think your daughter did? Give us some feedback on that. Is uh, that how you felt when you first started? Um, it wasn't bad. I can say you actually do depend on your site for a lot of things, and cooking is definitely one of them. Mm -hmm. Definitely one of them. I feel like I look like a five-year-old right now. I'm literally covered in Parmesan cheese. My hands are the color of Parmesan cheese right now. My feet still have raw. <laughs> um, I'm still looking for my fork. I can't find it. And I don't even have my I can't find my fork. I hope you've taken your blindfold off. I did. And I <laughs> Good. still can't find the fork. Oh, no. <laughs> but I'm going to find it. <laughs> We're going to find that. So, yeah. So we have a few more minutes and we're gonna take out my finished product and we're gonna see what happens. This was fun, you guys. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you because you let our audience realize that, you know, our sighted people realize it's not that easy to cook when you're blindfolded or, or blind Absolutely. or even blind pair, oh. right? Uh, they appreciate that, and also um, blind people appreciate that you are willing to stick your neck out there and try something different and, and give them some um, satisfaction as to what's really involved. It, it might look easy, but it's really a challenge, right? It's really a challenge. Absolutely. You made, Absolutely. It, fun. You made it fun and entertaining. We appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Alan, great. what do you want to say? You. Thank you so much, Arisha. You were great. Thank so, you. as we end today, I'd like to thank you, Cheryl Thurston and Arisha, for your courage, <laughs> courage and good humor. And thank all of you for joining us on the Cooking Without Looking TV show. Also, a special thanks to Blind United for all of your support. If you would like today's recipe, as well as any previous recipe, please go to our website at www.cookingwithoutlookingtv.wordpress.com and click on blog. Um, yes. Thank you, Ellen. That's so important for our audience. Also, for our audience, if you'd like to um, watch this show again or any other shows, you go on YouTube. And look for the shows there and look for Cooking Without Looking. 
And also don't forget to, to click like and subscribe as well. We really would appreciate that. Thank you, Alan. And, and for those of you that may be instructing blind people, please feel free to use our show for your blind and visually impaired <laughs> students. There is no charge. Many teachers around the United States and in more than 70 countries use our Cooking Without Looking TV show to teach their students. Annette? Yeah, that's right. It's, it's so, so helpful. And also what's helpful is to listen to our podcast. Anywhere you get your favorite podcast, even on Alexa or Spotify, you get to get deeper into the soul and the character and the hardships and the and the ups and the downs of our, our guests that are on the show because they tell their life story, they share their triumphs, and you would really enjoy it. It's so inspiring to try the podcast. So go ahead and, and do that as well. We hope you will do that. Thank you. Alan? And if you would like to donate to Vision World Foundation to help support us as we work to change the way we see blindness, please go to our website at www.cookingwithoutlookingtv.wordpress.com and mm -hmm. click on the link at the top of the page. For more information, you can call 305-200-9104. Annette? Yep, yep. And then our next show, make sure to mark this on your calendar. It's going to be in February. It was the second, I believe it was second Thursday in February, close to Valentine's Day. Uh, we'd love to see you there as well. So on behalf of Alan and myself and Renee and anybody else who's followed our cooking show, especially Cheryl and Arisha this time, we want to thank you for joining us today and we will see you next time. Bye for now. Thank you. Bye, you guys. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Thank you, guys. You're great. Great.